child prodigy to piano playing superstar, what you've just seen is just one of his many talents. Maths, topology, computer games, cooking and origami are among the skills of today's guest, Kit Armstrong. Kit, welcome to the show. Thank you for having me. It's a pleasure to have you. Now, Kit, you started talking at nine months old, reading the Wall Street Journal at three, playing the piano at five, and by 10, um, you'd composed 15 works, including a symphony. You'd graduated high school and you were studying maths, physics, and chemistry at university. Now, um, at the age of 27, you play around 100 concerts a year all over the world. Um, you're currently on a world tour. When you hear that list of all that you've accomplished already so young, what's it like? What do you think? I think, how come I don't remember any of that? <laughs> well, of course, I remember some of it. I was very lucky to have had uh, very early exposure to many very interesting and, uh, well, let's say unusual things, which I'm even now very passionate about. And, of course, I'm very lucky to be able to look back and say that I've um, not wasted all my time. It doesn't sound like you've wasted any. It sounds like you could have done anything that you wanted to. Why did you choose the piano? Why music? I'm surely not the first person to say this in this situation, but I think music chose me in the sense that I, as a child, was perhaps not necessarily pursuing the dream of uh, being a musician of, or being somebody on stage. I always loved doing it, but I sort of thought of it as a hobby aside from my mathematical studies. And at a certain point, I realized that maybe if I um, put myself to it, there was something I could say in the world of music. I always loved to compose, and I always loved to come in front of an audience and show what I thought about a piece. It's not trying to be arrogant to say that what I think about the piece is better than what anyone else thinks about it. But I thought, you know, I have something to say and I want people to hear it. And I'm very happy that people gave me this chance. You were first really in the public eye when you were about 10 um, on America's Late Show with David Letterman. Um, it's a while ago now. Um, but after that, you kind of stayed out of that limelight, the publicity limelight. You didn't do interviews. You could have gone down a very different route. Was that your mum who protected you from all that? Tell us about it. Of course, I was also very lucky to be surrounded by the right kind of people. And there are, of course, many ways of thinking about what is right for a thing like this. It's really a balance that one has to uh, understand between, of course, been out there because there are also people who don't realize the importance of that and don't realize that it's actually by playing in big concerts, it's by um, getting to know a lot of different people and uh, to be honest, to have um, life experience that one also develops. And of course, the flip side of this being that one also needs to stay true to, to oneself and to one's original love for the thing that one is doing, which is not, however one tries to do it, uh, perfectly represented in communication. And since um, 2005, you've had a very famous mentor, um, Alfred Brendel. How did that come about? It came about by a story which I will never forget. I was seated next to a good friend of his, actually, in a concert in Philadelphia, which I went to as a student. I was a, a piano student at uh, the Curtis Institute at the time. And afterwards, this good friend of his um, introduced me to him, to uh, Mr. Brendel. And Mr. Brendel offered that I should come to London and play for him. And that's how it all started. Well, um, Alfred Brendel has said, you have an understanding of the great piano works that combines freshness and subtlety, emotion and intellect. And your relationship was captured um, in the film Set the Piano Stool on Fire. We spoke to the director, Mark Cadell, about what surprised him most from the project. Have a listen. To be a good pianist, you need to have lived. Because Kid hadn't fallen in love yet, uh, didn't read the great romantic novels or 19th century novels, he might not be able to yet play Beethoven or Schubert or Mozart with the kind of depth that's required. But one day they were working on a Mozart sonata, I think, and Kit was playing it absolutely note perfect, 
Um, but perhaps there wasn't quite the amount of feeling that Alfred wanted. And he was saying, you've got to make the piano sing. And Kit was looking at him as if he didn't quite understand what that meant. And, and Alfred then demonstrated by um, dancing around the room. I'd never seen Alfred do anything like that before. It was, it was very, very moving. And I think possibly Kit understood something about emotions when he saw Alfred do that. Is that what happened? Tell us your version. Well, I mean, I'm really incredibly privileged to know Alfred Brendel from this angle. And we just saw some pictures of him coming to my place, actually. And uh, I mean, it's just incredible to, to see him being so so animated. And I, every time I see that, I realize that not everybody gets to see that side of him and to experience also a bit from the inside what music means to him. Uh, I wanted to ask you a bit about home. Like your mum is from Taiwan, your your father um, England. You were born in LA. You grew up in the United States. You studied here in Paris. You also have spent a lot of time in the UK and um, in Germany. Where do you feel is your home? Because you said earlier you're always on tour. So where is home for you? It's a very difficult question, but I'll have to say that home is where my professional and artistic interests are, which is in a disused church, which I bought a few years ago, and which I've turned into a kind of cultural center. Which is here in France, in North France. Indeed, it's in Irson, in Picardy. And I make some concerts there every year, sort of uh, special projects, handmade, tailor-made, and one of the projects, which of course was uh, an incredible moment for me, was to have Alfred Brendel over to do a concert together. Why this place? What attracted you to it? Well, first of all, it's a bit of a long story, but I wanted an organ because I love organ music. And I was thinking, together with my mum, well, if I want an organ, I probably need a church. So then we started looking for churches. And we found this church and we thought, wow, this is beautiful. We want this. And then we realized there was no organ, but that's OK. We'll get one. <laughs> OK, and your next concert um, is on the 19th of March at the Grand Théâtre de Provence in Aix-en-Provence in France. What are you going to be playing there? This will be part of a tour that I'm doing at the moment with the Swedish Chamber Orchestra, a very nice group with whom I have uh, the greatest musical and personal sympathy. And so we'll be playing a Mozart concerto and quite unusually for this kind of constellation, I'll be part of the orchestra in the second half, be sort of within the ranks, um, playing the, the Der Bürger als Edelmann by Strauss. Kit, how many hours of piano are you playing a day? Well, when I play the piano, I always think that I would only play the next note if I think my playing it is going to be nicer than silence. So as long as that keeps happening, and I do have a certain weakness of loving to hear myself play the piano, um, I will keep playing. And, and when that is no longer the case, I would rather do something else. And you've achieved so much. Um, what are your ambitions? What are your dreams, Kit Armstrong? Well, I guess there are always the, the dreams of what's coming up. One thing I'm really looking forward to is the um, premiere of my last composition, my latest composition, which is a set of songs based on texts by a contemporary German author. I've uh, made this for um, some musicians whom I know very well and who have absolutely beautiful voices, and I'm looking forward to hearing that. Okay, Kit, we end every show with our guest's cultural pick of the moment. What have you chosen for us? Well, I was in Tokyo, in Japan, a few weeks ago, and I saw a most interesting exhibition. I think it's called The, the Flowering World of Blue and White Ceramics. I mean, of course, uh, growing up in a certain kind of household, I always sort of thought of blue and white ceramics as being something I ought to be familiar with. But to be honest, before I saw this exhibition, it was never on my priority list of art that I loved. I loved uh, the ink paintings um, and many other things. But then I came here and I was um, most graciously received by its curator. 
and he explained to me that it's actually not just about what they look like, it's also about the story of them being a medium of cultural exchange. Okay, well, it sounds very interesting. That exhibition is on um, in Tokyo at the Idemitsu Museum until the 24th of March. Now we're going to end with you performing at your cultural centre, um, the Eglise Saint-Thérèse. Tell us about the video we're about to see. Well, uh, yes, this is um, one of those moments which made me, at least personally, feel quite warm in my heart because one of the important things about having this cultural centre is the openness to the community. And for this day, which I think was uh, La Fête de la Musique, we invited the children's chorus of the town. And you will hear that this is, this is no professional chorus, but these are literally the children who love music in this little town of Yerson. And we all joined forces in front of my church and uh, played a, a concert open to the community. Okay, Kit Armstrong, it's been a pleasure to have you on the show. Thank you so much for joining Thank us. Thank you. Remember our website, we're also on Twitter, Facebook and Instagram. There's more news coming up on France 24 after this. <laughs>